Okay. Okay, so, but it seems like everybody, you know. Uh, everybody who's coming is here. So, Dr. Patricia Nafti has a BA and an MA from Stanford University in Political Science and Education, and a PhD in Cultural Anthropology from UC David, uh, UC Berkeley. Berkeley. She has taught both Stanford and AUB, and founded and directed the Association for Volunteer Services between 1998 and 2012, and was the regional representative of the Arab nations for the International Association for Volunteer Efforts. 2015. She was the initiator and coordinator of the Arab Initiative to foster a culture of volunteering between 2010-2011 in collaboration with the Arab Thought Foundation. In 2012, she established the Learning to Care Institute, which provides consulting and education service and volunteerism in the Arab region. She has been the executive director of Volunteer for Lebanon since 2015. Dr. Nafte has written two books in the field, Learning to Care, Education, Volunteering, and Community Service, and Corporate Volunteering in the Arab Region, both available both in English and in Arabic. So please join me in welcoming her today, which, uh, where she will deliver a very timely talk about FAFs in the Pauga beyond protesting the streets. Hello. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, as you can see from this, I have myself been involved in the Thawra at one level or another. So here I, I will um, share with you, for beginning by sharing with you my, now that I want, oh, maybe here? Interesting. If I stay here, why isn't it on? Oh, and first this isn't on. Okay. We get our... Okay. That's on. And is this on? No, this isn't on. It was working all or too much before. It was watching when I was even breathing. OK. Very good. Hi. All right, so what is? <laughs> it's not doing it still. Please stay in until I get at least three. Two or three of these, what's going on? transformational event that, uh, that brought me there. Uh, I've been a private consulting on volunteering with something called the Learning to Care Institute, and I will explain what care means because as you see, care is always capitalized. Um, I became the founder of an, another organization, NGO, so I moved from one to the next, but with Volunteer for Lebanon, I kept doing my consulting while I was also doing the NGO. And also added on to that, um, became a member and engaged member of the Thaura. Um, I put a lot of thoughts into what should be the symbol of the Thaura. You know, should I put the fist? You know, I think that's a little too aggressive for me. But that sense that Lebanon is growing and its, uh, its social transformation is growing, I felt that was a good symbol to use. Um, I wanted to explain what the care of learning to care is because it really envelops what I am and what I try to do. Um, see, the care stands, it's a uh, uh, mnemonic device and, uh, that, that explains what a, a exemplary volunteer is. Sorry, I don't know where the Arabic got in there. Uh, capable is the first. And you need to be capable of whatever you're undergoing to do as a volunteer, but that a five-year-old can be capable of some things. 
uh, available. We all are busy people, so when are we available? How can we be available to do what is needed to do? And sometimes that takes a lot of creativity. Uh, reliable is probably the most important. How does one uh, make sure one does what one has committed to do? And it is one of the most difficult aspects of volunteering worldwide. How do you get people to understand that uh, volunteering just doesn't mean you do it when you like to. You know, if you've committed yourself, then it's a requirement, a responsibility. Um, and engaged, that you are really into it, you're really involved with it, which means that you should select, select volunteer opportunities and, and uh, opportunities to be engaged that you really care about. So, transformational moments. And I mentioned that I had one at AUB in the spring of 1993. I was teaching a course, an introductory course to, to anthropology, and I wanted my students to do something called participant observation, where they would go and into a place they're not familiar with and understand the rules of the game, so, so to speak. And so they went for 10 hours of service, at, a, at an organization anywhere, but this is 93 when it was not even easy to, you know, this is so, so much, you know, recently after the war that that was difficult to find those 10 hours, but it was trying to get uh, people to do service and in the process they were going to learn about gender and social stratification and all that and we discuss it in class, which in fact I learned was, social, was a form of service learning, but at the time it was just my way of getting them to do uh, participant observation. Um, one of your transformational moments, and I assume for most anybody in Lebanon, was October 17th. Um, and certainly it was mine. Um, but, you know, there have been many transformational experiences that I've had along the way. Um, in any case, that sense of what happened. I didn't anticipate October 17th. I think I started participating in, on October 19th, but um, gradually people became aware of what's going on. So I'm going to very quickly go through that uh, part uh, to have a sense of, of what was going on. October 17th, we had a spontaneous initial protest, and I think that idea of it being spontaneous is very important. Uh, October 27th, we participated in the human change, Many of you participated in that, I suspect. Um, uh, then there's the evolution of Gen Regenerate Lebanon. How many of you have ever been to Regenerate Lebanon on Martyr Square? Um, I encourage you all to go there and get to know about it. Regenerate Lebanon started simply with them on the, on the 18th, meaning the morning after the first, uh, first spontaneous protest. They started cleaning up the garbage and everything and, and sorting and recycling. On the 18th, they did it again. On the 19th, I, I participated. And on the 20th, I participated in cleaning up. And by chance, I ended up doing an interview for MTV. That was an interesting experience for me. Um, in any case, they started that way. They built, they started getting a few tents. They got other things so that they started taking over. Uh, public space. Um, uh, they uh, here is what it is now. Unbelievable, and all came out of volunteers, out of, um, of donations of people who believed in what they're doing. So now they have much more permanent spaces again on Martyr Square area and a real kitchen, and they feed uh, people. They don't say for the poor, for the rich, for the anybody else. They feed whoever comes by on metal plates, on sustainable things. They do not ever uh, create additional waste. It's very significant how they deal with that. Um, oh, oh, I'm getting into it. Okay. Oh, gee. We're having problems again. Okay. Maybe we go back. I'm here. I don't want to waste my hard time. You can fix that. I, I just want to do that. Okay. Okay. Here we have the. Um, it's fine. I can be here. You uh, independent civil parade and all of you. How many of you joined the civil parade in a, uh, on Independence Day? Truly, I felt it was the first Independence Day that people truly celebrated with enthusiasm. 
And I've been here for now uh, 27 years, and I was here many times before that. But this is the first time they didn't, weren't cynical about uh, the Independence Day. Here's Independence Day more things, and that sense that they actually in, engaged uh, the Munkhadi Bean all over the world uh, in having them sing the national anthem at, at a given time under one globally live streamed event. Um, uh, December 7th, we had a meditate for Lebanon, and again, they tried to get people all over the world to say at 6 p.m. Lebanese time, uh, we will all be meditating. And, and this was the participation. Uh, demonstration, this is, there were many, many demonstrations, so that's not. Christmas parade for kids, the Christmas dinner. How many of you went to the Christmas dinner? To me, it was one of the most exciting things I've ever been at, and I found out from the organizer they started planning for it five days before. I mean, really, it you know, zapped up people, uh, donated people, offered uh, services. There were 300 volunteers, and as you can see, the food was on metal plates or on, on re recyclable. Uh, Santa Claus came, uh, a cellist and many singers came, and these were all not planned, not organized, they just all participated in, in that. So the, the actual dinner was planned, but these added participation was not. Um, our Mark, New Year's Eve at Marty's Day at Marty's Square, and how many of you enjoyed that? Particularly? I mean, folks, you missed a lot of things. There are just some amazing stuff that's been going on that to me has been incredibly inspirational. Um, so, uh, Lebanese Creativity Day, um, February 2nd, do I dare ask? Yeah, some of you got to it. Um, and then there are lots of uh, discussion seminars, open mic events. Um, uh, general initiatives, of course, the Leo the Thaura. Um, this, oh, no, let me go back. Um, the, on the top left was done actually on day three, where they had invited people to, to write down their demands. Um, this other is Lebanese Food Bank collecting. And as you see on the bottom right, uh, this is gradually um, terminizing, if you would, uh, the role of the protesters, where they actually started having more permanent um, uh, spaces there for their, their activities. Um, what do all these initiatives of the Thau have in common? I think this is really important to consider. One is their huge, uh, they, there's a huge diversity of initiatives. Unbelievable how much variety, initiated by anyone, supported by volunteers, open to everyone, reinforcing the Thaura objectives, and serving as models and inspiration for others. I think that's really important. Any one of us can take an initiative to say, I want to do X or Y or Z, and uh, invite other people to participate and, and be active participants in the power in that way. Um, the social revolution. To me, um, the Thaura is not just to overthrow the government and start anew with that. It really is a social revolution to consider what, what is our society and how do we want to go forward. Um, so here, one flag, all united, rejecting political and sectarian divisions, radically inclusive. Everybody is invited to participate. No sense of new sense of nationalism, fervent waving of the flag, singing of the national anthem. That concept of kulana uh has really started to mean something really deep inside for a lot of people. Um, joyful, peaceful, at least for the most part. I'm not going to get into the non-peaceful issues. Other notable elements. It's headless. No clear leadership. There are lots of different groups that are leading in this in different ways, but there is no committee that runs it. Um, and I think that's important. There's been an enormous claiming of public space, that it is our space, and if we want to create something. And the government hasn't stopped that, which is notable. They haven't been push, pushing people away from doing that. Um, Teachings, discussions, open mind, that sense that everybody has something to say and we want to hear it. Uh, expressions of solidarity in art, music, and poetry, and clear, almost universally accepted demands. Now, here are the demands, 
I don't want to go into them. You all, I think, pretty much know them. Uh, one thing that I would like to share with you, if you don't know about this wonderful chart, it was created by the Saint Ferris Institute here at AUB, and it gives context, demands, and goals for the for the revolution. And they call it for the October uprising, but I think it's gotten far more than that. And I think this is an, and it's in Arabic and English, so it's a tremendously valuable uh, resource for anybody involved with the the uh, with the uprising with the. Kidar, the Italian. Um, other notable elements, oh, something like that. How does that connect with the food and agriculture and food sciences, the fact of agriculture and food sciences? How does it connect with AUV? How many of these elements have been brought to campus? AUV student elections, my understanding is the elections got canceled. No. People pulled out of their their candidacy because their candidacy was representing political parties and they realized that they, as now members of the revolution, didn't want that. And one by one by one they, they pulled out and that was where the election was postponed. Um, continue, you know, to what extent do they continue to refuse to represent outside parties? That's really important. Uh, model the kind of elections you want for the country as a whole, and I think this is really important. You know, whatever people do at AUB and any university, but whatever, um, to the extent that they model to other people what they want for the country as a whole, I think it's really important. Have the elections been rescheduled? No, Not yet. yet. No date yet. Not yet. And I hope that when they do, they will pull together and figure out how to do that and model the kind of elections they want. Um, run and vote for candidates who stand for policies and approaches that serve AUB in Lebanon, not, for, not stand for outside parties who tell you what to do and what to think. Um, and I think that it's important that AUB, to the extent it can, hold teachings and open mic discussions of university as well as national issues. I remember when I was a faculty member, the students, their typical response to something they were not happy with at the university was to strike. And I said to them, striking should be your last, you know, the last ditch effort. What, what happens when you try everything else? And yes, it's important to be able to strike and to do protests and whatever. But way before that, you should be pushing to meet with others. So I always tell them in classes, and I said to the students that I'd be willing to help them meet with appropriate administration people, but that strikes should come last. And I think this idea of holding teachings and discussions and getting everybody to talk about what they're frustrated with and what they want to change is really important. And again, to model what they want elsewhere. Neither give nor receive bribes, big or small. Neither demand nor accept favors from political leaders. I think that needs to be a real rallying cry of everybody involved with the, the, uh, the revolution, whether they're at the university or elsewhere. Um, as students, faculty, and administrators, um, most important to be actively engaged citizens. I know a lot are. I know that there have been a lot of wonderful protest marches that have started from campus and uh, other things that they've been doing. Um, I, I want to recognize the fact that um, AUB, in particular, the Faculty of the Agriculture and Food Sciences, has been involved um, the goal of the Federation of Higher Education. Um, I don't know how you guys use Goshira or what. Um, but Earth University's five key elements of success, and I've highlighted the first three, the experiential learning, community engagement, ethics and values-based leadership. And, these others are important too, but they're not so much the focus of what I do. To me, the first to be really, you're dividing them up, but they really are very connected. To what extent can your experience of learning be involved in community engagement and ethics and values based leadership? Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but the point here is that there are a lot of initiatives already at AUB. It was impressive to see this, to see this list provided to me. Uh, because uh, when I was a professor at AUB 92 to 98, um, 
very little of this was going on. Very little community engagement was act, was there. Uh, so clearly, there are already ways that people can be involved as students, as faculty, as administrators, and so that's wonderful. Um, carry on, and we see how that can be improved. Um, Thought-related ideas for for uh, this. Uh, faculty as well as APB. Some of them you may already be doing, some you may consider how that can do better. You can a can the depart the faculty and other faculties at APB play a role in guiding, overseeing, and holding the ministries in their areas of expertise accountable. I personally think that should be number one. Um, how that can be done, how departments can fit it with their courses and fit it with other things. But if we're going to have whoever our ministers, whether they're independent, whether they're not, that idea that we have people who are experts in their areas that guide, meaning that they say, I'm willing to help, not that I'm just there to confront you, oversee and hold accountable uh, the various ministries, I think is really important. Faculty, students of a B of other universities. I, you know, I think that's number one. Um, can students, faculty, and alumni at AUB in solidarity with their counterparts in other universities support transformational change to address the urgent economic, social, and political problems in Lebanon? And to what extent are they already meeting to figure out how to do that? Um, I talk about food security. I suspect that here it is. There's an awful lot of that already going on. Can students provide guidance, leadership, uh, and leadership to other Lebanese to establish school gardens, community gardens in public places, roof gardens, um, teach them agricultural methods, composting, pulp, mulching, uh, guidance of what grows, that was supposed to be a G, of what grows best, where, and when. I think of the fact that we'll be talking about an, another initiative that our group does that we would really uh, encourage people at this uh, faculty to help to make these things happen because food security is certainly very important. And to what extent can empty lots and schools and all other places that are empty spaces, instead of being macabre garbage dumps, uh, that they actually become uh, places that are productive for food. Um, other ideas can create and volunteer at a summer weekend holiday retreat center where young children can learn basics of agriculture, organize workshops for people to learn basics of how to plant trees, to expand the urban forest, and do planting in the hills of Lebanon, inform participants of sources of free seedlings or create a nursery to provide such free seedlings, train others to create such nurseries in their own areas. I speak about all of those with experience of running something which I'll talk about. It was called Global Youth with service days before, and how many times I saw students planting trees that knew nothing about what they were doing, and it was going to be inevitable that those trees would die. If we're going to encourage tree planting, we need to encourage them to know how and where to do it. Um, uh, other idea of on campus, address the issue of waste management by improving recycling and collecting organic waste at ABB. I know this prison here, prison was something I started as a faculty member here called the Program for Responsibility and Solid Waste Management. We were trying to get people way back in 93, 94, 95 to understand that we are going to have a crisis of waste management and we need to start thinking how to deal with it. Um, ban single-use plastics from ABB, water bottles, straws, plastic plates, cups, tableware at the cafeteria, at graduation, and other club events. Um, I don't think water, plastic water bottles should be sold at AUB. I don't think anything of single-use plastic should be at AUB. You banned smoking. And who would have ever thought that that would have been successful? And so you can ban single-use plastics and, and create a model for others. Um, minimize use of imports and buy locally. Steel, sell stainless steel water bottles. Mm and etch names, phone numbers, email address on their side, and, oops, and, uh, arrange for commercial or free fill-up of safe water throughout campus. When I was a student at AUB, you went to places that were water fountains that were safe and you used them. 
you know, this idea that we have to pay for water because it's not safe otherwise is something I, I think that it should be a civil right to have free water. But that's another matter. Even if you have to pay for it, you have ways that you deal with it without plastic. Across different disciplines within AB, coordinate uh, faculty of agriculture and food science efforts with other faculties and departments at AUDB. And so I give some ideas about this. Um, I don't want to go into the details about that, but there are a lot of um, departments that could interweave with what you're doing to have greater impact. Um, connection to the social sciences, um, mainly dealing with issues of cultural differences about across socio-cultural boundaries in Lebanon. How do we help deal with that and for, to have more effective potential collaboration? Uh, how do we deal with behavioral change, understanding resilience, resistance to and effectiveness of different groups in achieving behavioral change? Because that sense of knowing what's the right thing to do is very different from getting people to do it. And um, I think that's really, really very important. Um, and that's true in terms of students and faculty. How do we get students and faculty to be self-introspective and, uh, and consider their own ability to cross social boundaries and their own resilience, resistance to an effectiveness in achieving behavioral change? Um, I've dealt with that when I have uh, interns in my uh, organization, have them really consider what are they doing and how, how difficult it is for them to change, how difficult it is or something like this versus uh, using plastic water bottles. And, and I even had people, student people in my interns, who were using plastic cups at home for drinking water because they didn't want to wash dishes. I mean, to me, it just bombed my mind. You know. So we need to consider those things. Um, recommendations to student faculty administration, to me, the central one, and one that I would really encourage first and foremost is to create a central hub for community engagement document that documents analyzes civic engagement throughout ADB, whether service learning volunteering and internships provides greater networking and interdisciplinary collaboration within the university i know that you have a center for civic engagement here but i also know that it doesn't do a lot of those things um, i know that there are other groups that do wonderful things that whole list you have was fantastic but in my understanding from people I've talked to, there's not much integration of them uh, that would really support this. And other things that would do strengthen and facilitate greater links to civil society organizations and provide networking, collaboration, sharing of experiences with other universities in Lebanon and the region. I wrote my first proposal to AUB to create such a center in 1997 presented it two other times to ADB. ADB decided to do something with the Center for Civic Engagement, which is wonderful, but it is by no means a central hub for community engagement that encompasses all of this. And I would really encourage whether that evolves into such a center or something else is created that kind of is a, an overarching connection. I think that would be important. For faculty, whoops. Uh, for faculty who engage students in the community through service learning and other approaches, provide incentives so that they'll want to do it when they know it takes more work. Provide training in service learning. The assumption that faculty members know how to do that um, is a mistake. I think that, that some will do it well without, but they will do it a lot better if they are trained. Um, provide resources, guides, and sample syllabi. And help in linking them community partners. Student support, provide more service learning feminine courses, um, academic credit, assistance in designing ways students can fulfill course assignments that provide a service. Um, one of my dreams was I, you know, when I was thinking of doing this center at ABB, oh, I was still a faculty member, but uh, if, if any of you know the kind of the game where you have a squiggly, you, you have to make a squiggly one and hand it to somebody and you say, draw a horse. And I thought that one of the things that the person in this center would do is somebody would come and say, oh, I have to do an assignment where I write a children's book 
and how can you help me make it useful? And I would say, well, you know, we'd play around with ideas and everything, but then at the end they would end up maybe writing a book on childhood diabetes and send, give it to the Diabetes Association. They would do it on various other things. Uh, the uh, engineers would have to survey something. They would survey parks or potential parks, etc. There were lots of things that people could do that would use what their expertise is and not simply do it for a professor and throw it in the garbage afterwards. And I think that's really important. Uh, supporting and connecting with community partners as individuals and student teams. So that's it. I will share with you this initiative that um, we do called National Youth Service Week um, very, very quickly, but it gets youth ages 5 to 25 to do service projects. It is focused on one week, but a lot of the resources are for students all year long, or for youth all year long. And so there are dates for this, they're in, in it. Um, I'm not going to go into date, but April 3rd is the first date, which means they have to present uh, a, a pre-project form that says what they're going to do. Um, and so that we can visit them, we can help them support them. Um, why participate? It gives recognition to already existing projects, incentives to develop new projects, focuses on youth empowerment and service because its focus is on students, youth, planning and implementing the project. Even the five-year-olds can work on planning. Uh, its theme is sustainable service, so you no know, plastic, single use plastic, etc. Opportunity to engage other youth in service, recognition on global map of global youth service days and our national map, and so forth. Uh, that's the guide. Here's the guide here. I have lots of copies of the guide in black and white, Arabic and English, so if anybody wants to pick it up. Uh, what's important about that guide is it's an important resource. Um, whether you participate in National Youth Service Week or not, it is it's earned an how to participate, but it also discusses the meaning of sustainable service, it talks about the sustainable development goals, so if you don't know about them, they're listed here, and there's resources of how to get more information about them. It talks about 10 R's for the environment, and reduce, reuse, recycle are good, but there are a lot of others, seven others to consider. How to plan and implement a project gives a guide of how to develop a project from beginning to end, um, and, and it provides an understanding of volunteering. So it's free online, but it's also free for you to pick up here. Copies of it in Arabic or English. I'm more in Arabic than English, but you're welcome to have either. Personal transformation, and I want to do this very quickly because um, I do want some time for uh, Q&A. How do we keep currency in Lebanon and reduce waste and pollution? Buy locally, buy less, share more. And use of single-use plastics. You know, it's kind of broken record about that. And records. And, um, and purchase of cheap clothing and other projects that don't last. There's more of another reason why you don't, do, you don't buy cheap clothing is because every time you wash it, some microbeads, plastic microbeads, go into the water system. So there are lots of reasons to be careful about single-use plastics and, and cheap clothing. I'm not saying you don't have plastic, we're using plastic, you're sitting on plastic, but that's not single-use plastic. And I think that's what we should save plastics for, among other things. Uh, avoid polluting the water with hair dyes, shampoos, other projects with products with microplastic beads. Um, be environment, environmentally conscious in how you throw out whatever you no longer want. Tissues, cigarette butts, plastic bags, and on and on and on the stuff we have that we need to get rid of. How can we get rid of it in environmentally conscious ways? How we work, honor who all who do manual work labor, model transparency and accountability, encourage dissent and diversity of opinions, hire Lebanese, um, encourage students to do most of the work on campus. I know they do some. Do they work in the, the, the library? Do they work in the cafeteria? Do they, you know, we need to not be afraid to be in front of our fellow students and we're working. Um, encourage all in the family to contribute to family domestic work. I think the, that, you know, in America, which is where I come from, uh, only the rich, the very rich, 
have lived in uh, help. And everybody else who's very, very busy somehow gets it done and maybe has somebody come in once a week or twice a week to clean up. Why on earth do, do probably everybody in the middle class in Lebanon or almost everybody feel they have to have a domestic servant? I think we need to think about what that means in terms of one of the biggest problems of our having volunteers is they don't want to do work that they think is for the, the, the maids and, and, and outside workers. And so the kind of entry-level volunteering, they don't want to do, they don't want to pick up garbage, they want to do, and that's part of life. That's part of what we need to do. Anyway, how to engage in politics, I don't want to get into this, support initiatives with your time. Ah, support positive initiatives with your time and talents. Run for office yourself. And support independent, capable, and responsible candidates. And then hold them accountable too. And again, I say it again because I think it deserves to be said, ending corruptions can't come unless we neither give nor receive bribes, big or small, neither demand nor accept favors from political leaders. I have one other thing, I'm not going to get into it quickly, but get to know the country and its people. There are 27 Kada, where 52 weeks in a year, could you every two weeks go to a different Kada, especially ones you haven't ever been to? Um, and you look at it, how, you, how many have you visited in the past year, ever? I visited all of them, but I haven't visited all of them every year. But it is something, if you're Lebanese, you need to know Lebanon. Get to know what a wonderful country it is once you get out of Beirut. Beirut is wonderful in its own way. But you go to Akkar and the Niki and, and all these other places, there are some amazing things to see and people to meet. You may already be doing some of these, if so, can they be improved in some way? Finally, citizens. We are all Lebanese. On the streets, we are not Shia or Sunni or Christians, we are citizens. On the streets, we are not students, laborers, professionals, rich, poor, rural, urban, from south, north, east, or west. We are citizens, concerned, committed citizens. A, this is a political revolution, but it is also a social revolution in which we are the foundational unit as ethical, engaged citizens, now and throughout our lives. And I end with Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. And, oh, I didn't quite think of that. I wanted to move this care to being exemplary citizens, not just exemplary volunteers. Exemplary citizens are capable, available, reliable, and engaged. There's lots of things that if people saw this on their own and it may be online or available, otherwise we can look at the details. But I think it's important to know that there are details for which we don't have time to go over. So, questions? Yes. Thank you. We don't have to talk about cheap clothing because it's a controversial issue. And uh, I mean, I know where you're coming from, but. Cheap, well, what the problem? Yes, cheap clothing gets thrown away fast. Yeah, First then, of all, no, but there's cheap, no, there's good clothing that wears out and you give to the poor. Cheap clothing gets so bad that even the poor can't take it. Anyway, so that's, that's really what I'm talking about. My, my, if we all wear out and lose interest in things at all. So good quality clothing, preferably natural fibers, will last a long time and when it, when we get tired of it, we give it to the poor. Anyway, that's yes, not my question. That, yeah. that wasn't my question. My question is, you did a wonderful job looking at the impact of Thaura on AUB. Yes. I'd like to look at the other way around. We thrive to have gradually ethical leaders at AUB. Yes. And AUB graduates are all over the country in leadership position. I question, have they done what they're taught to do? And I'd like to ask the, the, the bigger question, which is the impact of, of the revolution, the power of people who were really protesting injustice to build a better Lebanon, how much their AUB education has prompted them to be on the to uh, uh, not to tolerate anymore the injustice 
So it's the other thing. My question yes, is the yes. other way around. How, yes, how, how, how was the well in the AUB? Have you done a good job in, in, in instilling that in yes. our students? My just gut feeling about that is that it's yes and no answer to that. I am sure, you know, this we have all been living in a culture that accepts rides and a lot of, hey, I was a professor at AUB and a student, I failed. All of a sudden, somebody, three people came to my office, wanted to talk about this student who failed. And I said, who are you? And they just, they wanted me to change the failure. And I said, are you in this political party? And they said, yes. I said, that you failed him, not me. You failed him. If he needed help to do better, then you should have made sure he did better because he should have earned the grade. But you might have been able to help him earn it. Now, my point is that, you know, the elections at AUB were permeated with politics, and all these people who graduated from AUB, when there were elections like that, uh, connected with both the ethical issues and not. I remember trying to push for something called the honor code at AUB. And I required, I, I, I tried it with my students, and we did it for midterm, where we, I said, you're going to be on your own to honor that you are not going to cheat, and you're not going to let others cheat, and you're not going to help others cheat, and you're going to, now they didn't want to report anybody else for cheating, but I remember, I left the room, let them do their exam. And I asked them afterwards to write a note with anonymously, how did it work? And they said, I felt I had 30 pairs of eyes looking at me. Now it was an issue of, you know, other people seeing. It still wasn't an issue of them internalizing it so much. At Stanford, you can go off and go in a corner and, and do your exam. Nobody else will say, say no, you can't do it. Um, you do it. And, and so, I'm not sure. I, I know as a student as well as a faculty member, but, you know, I know as a student I, at AUB, you know, the moment I got out of a, an exam, people were there to get a copy of the exam from me. And I looked at them like they're out of their minds because I'm part of the Stanford Honor System. And I ripped it up in front of them, which of course made me not very uh, uh, popular to all of them. But that idea that we have to recognize that we, we have to, to have this permeate what we do. And I'm not sure AUB, I'm sure it's better now in, that, in many of those respects than it was. But there's a lot that needs to be done to make this ethical education really permeate into the everyday life of people here. Yes? Um, if I may address his yes. question through the point of view of a current AUB student. I am actually studying political studies here, and I have recently moved to Lebanon for my undergrad. So I can't tell you about the previous um, AUB graduates, but I can tell you about the current students. And yes, I think that AUB has definitely led the student coalition aspect of it. So on our level, if you see all of the collaborations that's happened with LEU, USG, Balaman, the central point is tending to be AUB because we are trying to reach out to them. So I think this is where it shows that AUB has built in this leadership and it has uh, equipped, equipped us with the knowledge and the skills to do it. So I think that yes, AUB has definitely put it smart because even if you, uh, uh, if you uh, recollect what in the protests themselves, we were having stands, we were organizing the biggest uh, student-led march that started from AUB as a, a meeting point led by many of our faculty members alongside others. It shows that AUB students have had it in them this whole time and we just kind of wanted this spark and this opportunity to show and we were able to shine. Of course, every single citizen, irrespective of being a student or not, has played a role, but AUB has definitely taken the lead at least on the level of students. Yeah, I think, I think thank you very much, Sarah. Um, I think we all have to look at how, how what we do impacts how other people do things. How are we a model of what we want this country to be? And if we're going to complain about the corrupt leaders, 
and yet go back and get a job, or our parents have a job from the corrupt leaders, and or whatever. I mean, the reality is, it is there are probably a fair percentage, 5, 10, 20 percent of AUB students who have been, have gotten washed in one way or another that have helped them get to AUB in a way, you know, and their parents have gotten their money, and there are probably thousands and thousands of employees of the central of, of the Lebanese government who are doing nothing. You know, I've heard stories about people who go into schools and sit there and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes and go home and collect their paycheck. And I remember years back when I met with the uh, governor of Beirut, and he said, please bring us volunteers. I said, why? You have a lot of uh, staff. He said, most of them don't do anything. We can't have that. We have to get rid of all of this dead wood in the government. We have to not be paying people for working for the trains when we don't have trains. Working for various other things. But we also have to recognize that we need to have our behavior change. Every time a, a student or a faculty member or whatever throws something out their car window, or lets their kid throw something out their car window, they are going against the revolution. And I think that, and every time they get a plastic bottle, they are going against the revolution. I think we need to say, we can't be 100% perfect, but we can keep improving. And I think that this is important. And ABB, it's smoking was a really good one. I went to uh, uh, San Jose the other day. And it's, it's trying to be a smoke-free. It isn't say it is a smoke-free campus, but it is pushing for that and encouraging it. You were one of the model. And, you know, I remember having a, a, a project that some of my students did where they were um, observing students throwing cigarette butts on the ground and other things, leaving stuff on uh, Green Oval and uh, watching the, the the uh, janitors clean it all up, and I, I remember walking down the street, and one of them dropped a a uh, cigarette carton, and I picked it up, and I said, "Excuse me, you dropped something." He said, "I threw it out." I said, "Yeah, but this is the campus. He says, it's my campus. I can do what I want. You know, we got to change." And now there are no no cigarette butts. It's wonderful. One of the best things about it is that there are no cigarette butts on campus. But it also is saying you can model one thing after another, and you already are doing a lot of that. Yes. Two things, uh, Patricia, that you um, you know you brushed off in your uh, presentation, and I think which just might be of interest to some, at least to me. You mentioned training of faculty members in community yes. service, and you mentioned the role that uh, the community engagement center here at EB can fulfill in coordinating all the community service activities. Can you just give us a little bit more of how these, I mean, what would be the role, what would be the significance of one center coordinating all community engagement and community service at the university? And what are some of the elements that should be included to train faculty members on how to include uh, community service at their courses? Okay, start with the training. Yes. Um, I have done training at, at, at NDU on service learning because they decided that was something that they wanted to work on. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Bellaman has done service learning, as they call it, for a very long time, since I was a faculty member at AUB. However, it was always adult. It didn't really integrate into the class course. And I think that's really important. We want to do service learning in courses that actually enhances the learning process while it provides a genuine service to the community. And it can be in math, history, science, art, whatever, but it needs to integrate it. And uh, a, course, a, a training is not a huge long thing, but three or four sessions with faculty where they learn about the key elements of uh, incorporating it into a syllabus, they go home and they try, or go out and they try to fix it with their course, and then they come back, they discuss it, and shares their ideas, and then goes through that. Um, I think that's really important. I think that 
Um, I know that there is much more training of faculty members in better teaching than there used to be. I mean, I, when I was teaching, uh, graduate students learned their field, but you know, teachers, undergraduate K-12 teachers learn how to teach. Graduate, you know, professors at universities never learn how to teach. They just learn their field. And that assumption that they somehow know how to teach is ridiculous. And now there's a lot more uh, faculty development at the university level, which is great. But service learning is an important tool. It is only one tool in pedagogy, uh, but it is an important one that links service and learning. And I think that, yeah, uh, if they would want to do that, I would, be, would love to work with them on that. I think it's really important. And then provide resources and make them aware of the kind of resources they can find online that one could bring in and have available for them. And then they share with each other, which is also part of the training process. Yes? Uh, oh, wait, I didn't finish the second thing. <laughs> second thing was, was I mean, what, why would it be important for one center to work? Oh, center. Yeah. Keep in mind, I'm not assuming that that center runs everything. It, it keeps from the right hand not doing what the left hand is doing. And when Red Cross works with the university, that, that there's a connection to, you know, that everybody knows about it. That there is evaluation of it, that there is record of it, so that we have a good record of what's going on here. By the way, service at, at, at AUB is, has been around a long time. Um, the, I, I helped a person uh, deal with the memoirs of a person named Afif Tanous, who was a faculty member here in the 30s. And they created something called Village Welfare Society. And they went out and made it clear even then, in the 30s, we are out to learn from the villagers as well as give our learning to them. And that experience uh, was very important to him and to all the students that were there. Um, so it's not running the show. I don't think that the center should, it should fill the gaps where they aren't there. It should be able to tell students and faculty, these are the kind of things that support you. These are the kind of community partners that can help you, can work with you, and so forth. So it's not, it, it shouldn't take away the autonomy of these other programs, but it should make for better coordination. I think I took the course in 93 to be anthropology. <laughs> did you take the one where you had to do 10 hours of service? I don't think so, I did. Uh, my question is, how can we get in contact with the regenerate people? I mean, probably not to do something FAFS really, but we do, the associate dean of students is, is FAFS, it's from FAFS. Right. And uh, we wanted to start some sort of recycling uh, with the cigarette butts project to do oh. uh, floatable uh, posts for the world. How can we get in contact now, with them? Regenerate Lebanon is organized by Recycle Lebanon. Yes. So you can look on their website. If anybody needs, I can give you the information I would, I would about the, the the head of that, Jocelyn Caddy. Uh, yes, so it's still Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Because we started with Jocelyn, but but the, our yeah. partner was uh, working for the Minister of Environment, who is no, our still Jocelyn. and who, who is and with us now. What I love about Regenerate is it started from nothing and it wasn't waiting for getting a lot of grants and everything. It just I got a little tent here, I got a little bit there, I got a little bit there, and gradually, you know, every time I go there, there's more wonderful stuff. When I saw that kitchen uh, the other day, yesterday, I went there to take pictures of it um, for this presentation. I was blown away by how beautiful stainless steel, you know, things there. So, you know, when you have initiatives, don't feel you have to have everything. But, you know, that idea that anybody can do and start creating things. Anybody can go to downtown and bring their accordion and start people singing with them. They can bring stuff for children to play with. They can do, you know, yeah, you can do things as a group and big things that last and stay, but all these things are possible. It's really quite wonderful. So just take contact with Jocelyn again. For that, yes. Yes. But I just have a comment on what you said. and. Uh, because of our Lebanese uh, way of thinking, uh, a lot of people around the revolution and because uh, a lot of initiatives started to, to flow from there, uh, decided to sometimes start initiatives without really looking at what was actually already there. 
and instead of pairing or you know just getting on board with something like Regenerate or Recycle Lebanon or Lebanon and a lot of initiatives were done, they were like doing it on their own and that's that's not good. I think that's a very good point. I think that sense of collaboration. You know, we run a center called the Volunteer Center, the Volunteer for Lebanon, which are we want to be a hub. You know, we're at a, whatever level, a hub for volunteerism. Not and and it would be great if different groups that want to deal with volunteerism work with us. Not again this idea of keeping your autonomy, but working with others so that you. You overlap and you work together rather than separately. I think that's really important. Um, and I think it, it requires kind of mapping. You know, of initiatives and NGOs so yeah. that people know where to go if they want to, if they have. And, and there is some of that already um, on, um, what is it, on the uh, Lil Madani, not the Lil Madani, the Lil Madani, but the Lil Thaura has a lot of that. Um, I think that it's important to capitalize on what is good in Lebanese traditions. Um, you know, people say to me, oh, single use that you know, you can't get Lebanese not to do that. That's part of Lebanese society. I said 30 years ago when I came to Lebanon, there was no single use plastic. That's been created and added on to Lebanese culture, and it can be uncreated, uh, taken away. Uh, on the other hand, things like owning and, and uh, uh, other things that, that were bringing people together to support a common cause were part of Lebanese culture and can be, uh, can be reinforced and encouraged. Um, so uh, even the term was bad. I didn't like the term was bad a lot because it, gave, it gives the impression you have to do it because it's an obligation. But if you look at it instead as you're now in a circle of people who you're obligated to do supportive, you know, community support for. So your family, you have that wajbet within your family. Now you're expanding it to the whole society. We have wajbet to the society. Yes, I think that's good. Um, not that you're, you're, you're compelled by your sense of belonging. I think that's what wajbet has got to be seen as. Not as, I have to do it. But I am compelled by my obligations to the society I'm part of. Yeah. One of the questions somebody asked in the interview, they used the intimate. They used the word intimate. They said, they see, I'm a foreigner. I'm here cleaning up and all that. And I said, no, no, I'm not a foreigner. I'm an American Lebanese. You know, there are a lot of people in America who are Lebanese Americans. I'm an American Lebanese. And, you know, I. You know, but that sense of belonging is important. We are where we are. We breathe the air. We eat. We are in the streets. We, there, we have to be part of it. Yes. Well, I think the, the problem is that the, uh, the system, the political system, has uh, has uh, released uh, the sense of never ownership. The, the, the students, the, the citizens, are not owning. They, are, they don't feel ownership to be uh, a part of this Lebanon. This, uh, this released from them any, any uh, responsibility. I think for the AUV, why that not beginning from this campus to be, to be every student to be feeling the ownership of this campus. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, uh, not running it as a um, uh, 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 traditional system that there is a part of the who take leads, who take decisions, and all everybody is down like following. Yes. Why I think the UB should be uh, a starting, model. starting sense of ownership for, for students, for for teachers in the uh, in the campus for running it from as as, uh, as uh, the, 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 all the parts they are owning this campus. I, I know yeah. that very, uh, everybody is under the, the lows here. Everybody, you see that there is sense of, uh, but it is like if we don't feel ownership of the of where we really belong, we will never have the will to do anything. I think that's a very important thing. I think the top that, that is part of Lebanon. This is the Le Lebanon. Lebanon is a patriarchal society traditionally. Yeah. Means that in your family, father decides. 
It means that if a mother decides something, she has to get around the father decides. Um, and the kids don't decide anything. Even often, what they major in at A to B, you know. And um, it goes up from there, that, that sense of top down, that other people tell you what to do. That, you know, that, that when you have a municipality, instead of encouraging you know, individual initiatives to do wonderful things, you say, no, we're in charge, and we'll decide what gets done and all of that. No, I mean, there should be coordination, there should be, you know, but I, I think that's very important. Uh, at schools, at every institution. You know, you think of how many organizations have been read by the same person for 20, 30 years. Why? AUB Alumni Association was run by the same person for something like 30 years before they had a new person. You mean at AUB they don't have people who are capable of running an NGO? I can't believe that. So, but people have to give up. You see, ownership means you have to give up your control and bring to other people. That, by the way, is one of the goals of National Youth Service Week. Projects are to be run by the students, the youth, as much as possible. And the adults are there to protect them, to make sure they don't do things that are unsafe, or, you know, but, and not provide guidelines. But that sense of empowerment and, and belonging is really important. Anything else? I know some of you have to go, but this yeah. one more question is on more academic level, yeah. more professional level. Uh, uh, we all know that many students and many professors have done papers or studies uh, related, for example, to water, uh, collecting water in Lebanon. There are many papers, definitely. And these can, t can be turned into policies. So maybe this is the right time to gather all the projects, papers, studies into one place so that whenever uh, the opportunity comes to uh, include them, the studies are ready to uh, I think, them into policy. Is this such a venture? I think it gets back to my, my one of my first suggestions was AUB should create committees of faculty and students for every single ministry of Lebanon and put together what they know and that's part of what they know, pull together what they know, provide advice, provide support, say, we're ready to help you, but also we're only going to watch out for you and we're going to tell so the people of Lebanon when you go against the objectives and the interests of the country. So this is what we should do, and the minister is in AUB. Well, I'd like to think of that helps. So far, I'm asking. We have, we do have such initiatives, but it cannot, it is not AUB who's doing it. It is initiatives by different groups of faculty members who belong to different disciplines. So there is a health initiative, there's an education initiative, there's a policy initiative, but it is not really as AUB, because AUB at the end of the day yeah. is not, uh, cannot be you know, uh, an active party in, in, politics. in politics, but you have yeah. experts from the university who have grouped themselves into different disciplines and who are participating as such. In my view, so that they need to both collaborate with other faculty in other universities with the same discipline and with the students. Get the students in and understand how do we do this. How um, do we find the who? Um, the groups of, of faculty members like working well, on a professional academic level. On a professional level. Yeah. Sorry. So there's one course we're taking. It's called landscape appreciation. And by that, we study an area in the village and we point out the threats and the potentials of this area. So I think for around for the past like few years, um, Dr. Trevato has been working with municipalities. Uh, and giving them the work of students whereby they go assess the land and they point out the local points, the potentials, where can this uh, area develop, do it tourism wise or economic wise or on a social level. So, yes, I do agree that many professors are trying to do that. However, it's not formal, but, but in many courses, we are technically transferring the message to villages or to outside people. That's great. And it needs to be documented. That's where a center would document that and provide that as a a, what is an archive of what is happening and what we can draw on as resources for the future. I think that's really important. Um, yeah. um, I'm going to apologize because I'm not sure yes, if there's something in this yes. room. 
now, but I mean, you're welcome to continue your discussion um, in the area. And if any of you want a copy of the National Youth Service, whether you want to participate or just want to have that, um, they're in Arabic.